Hi guys, uh, Andrew here. I have a couple headshots I shot. I needed to retouch. I was shooting these in the client's home. They had white-ish walls, um, and for various reasons, I didn't want to drag enough equipment to do on white straight on camera. Uh, I had two lights with me, a key light uh, with a big three by four softbox right on his face. I had a reflector below him for a little bit of reflective clamshell. And then I had a um, strip box, like a three by one and a half strip box on the back. You can see the gradient of light coming across here. Um, my goal was to get the wall white-ish bright enough to where it wouldn't look unusual if I dropped, dropped him onto white, which is what I'm going to do now. So real quickly, I'm going to drop him on white. So I'm going to take the background on it and then I'm going to do a quick re skin retouch. Um, and I've got a bunch of these. You'll see I can do this pretty quick. So... Let's start with here, duplicate that, name that one original, good. Just turn that off, see where I've been. Quick select tool. That's not the quick select tool. I don't know why I grabbed the wrong tool. Sometimes I do that. Quick select tool, add. Now it's not gonna get it 100% right. Got pretty close, subtract. Let's go ahead and clean this shoulder up just a little bit. Okay, close enough. So now, create a mask, turn off my marching ants, put the mask on there. Now, I'm gonna invert that mask, there we go. And finally, let's refine the mask. Okay, that, that's wrong right there, but by and large, everywhere else looks pretty good. Um, his fuzzy hairs, it's kind of halfway selecting. We're on white, and it was shot on a pretty bright background, so that won't be too bad. So I'm gonna clean this up right here, background. It's gonna go ahead and mat this when I let go. So hopefully it'll do a good job. I got it a little bit wrong. What's happening here is it's having trouble finding the edge when these two are very nearly the same color. Very nearly the same tone, anyways. There we go. It's a little better. This is why I wanted to have the background as close to white as I can get it, because it makes this drop easier. Just kind of go along here and get that. Use your square brackets left and right to make the brush bigger and smaller. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to mat, but I'm going to mat with a very small brush, which sort of limits the width that it can consider as it refines that edge. Yeah, it looks much more similar to the other edges. Okay, so hit OK. Okay, so there's our mask. Easy, easy. Create a new pixel layer, drag it below. Flood fill. Flood fill white. There you go, on white. Super simple. Now, just for giggles, I'm gonna make this black. Um, and that looks okay, but you notice it doesn't look as natural and these hairs have some weird haloing around them. It's because the background was light. So a lot of times it's, you, even if you're gonna do something in post, you want to get close in camera because it makes makes doing it easier. So now let's tackle the skin retouch on him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two. Good. And then I'm going to duplicate this, Command J. Actually, I didn't need to do that. See, sometimes I do things the wrong way. Uh, I'm going to go Merge Visible. Okay, I actually don't need to rename that because what's going to happen is if I do filter frequency separation, it's going to go away anyways. Okay, so built-in frequency separation. So my goal here is to move things onto the high frequency layer that need to be dealt with texture-wise um, and leave just kind of big areas of 
bright and dark on the low frequency layer, and that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. And your radius will depend, and, and sometimes it makes more sense to make it bigger or smaller for given tasks. So sometimes I'll do multiple frequency separations. Um, sometimes I'll do them for a, a given thing and then merge them and then do a different one. Okay, so pick our source using our healing brush. So I know one thing is crow's feet are not desirable. And so what you're gonna do here is we're just gonna clone texture that's from a similar area of his skin and just reduce these crow's feet just, a, well, to be honest, I'm removing them almost completely here. And that's okay. Um, this is sort of an experiment with the client. He wasn't sure if he, if he wanted to look that young or not. Okay. Other thing I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm not done with the crow's feet yet, but I'm going to remove the bags under his eye. Um, so one thing, um, I've moved to the low frequency layer now. I wanna do is I'm just kind of smoothing out the shadows and stuff. You can think of the low frequency layer as giving us the overall shape and the high frequency layer of showing us texture and edges because areas of shadow are what tell us the shape. So if we look right here, so I've just kind of smoothed that cheek out. Now watch versus the original. See how his cheek looks very wrinkly, very, not wrinkly is not the right word. It looks very, very uneven. He, like, he's got a, some shape there that may not be there. And so now there it is without that. Um, I will say it looks like maybe I need to put back some of the texture here. There's a little less texture than I would like there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually, so I picked down here that was in a similar plane, but I feel like it needs a little more texture. So what I'm actually going to do is let's see if I can find a source for that that I like. Let's go right here. Yeah, I see the grain's wrong there. So part of what's going on here is just, just not a huge amount of texture. So I'm kind of putting this in with low opacity. You can see in the original, there's, it's, it's smooth-ish if you ignore the big lines. Okay, so let's go. I don't really like what I did there. Let's just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay. So now comes, so that's one eye. Um, let's finish up this bag under the eye. As long as I find it helpful to turn off. I don't really get too much. Okay, there's that. So I'm not doing any skin retouching at the moment on him. I haven't decided how much I'm gonna do. Um, this is actually a proof of concept for him. I wanna show him, he said, well, I don't really, the ones where I'm smiling, I look like I have too much laugh line. So I just wanted to show him where I could take those out just a little bit. Give him an idea and see if he feels like he looks natural or not. Some people, that level of retouching is not really what they want. Always gotta be conscious of what you're selecting layer-wise. Okay. 
Okay, let's go back to the high frequency on this side. You'll notice when I work in high frequency, I very frequently work with much smaller brush sizes because when you work with high frequency, you're working with local details. Not so much the big global stuff anymore as local texture. Okay, that's how the cheek looks pretty smooth. Like shape wise. So now let's clean up some blemishes. One thing I find helpful for that is just turning on and off different layers. I'll turn the high frequency off and you can see that that, that little just colored spot right there is on the low frequency layer. Um, you'll notice this low frequency layer looks a little bit chunky. That tells you that there's the separation I chose is um, kept some of the details on the low frequency that might have should have been on the high frequency. But I can make that work pretty well, actually, because this if I do this, I'm not going to lose the texture, but I can still smooth out the big areas of shadow and dark. OK, so look how much diff look how much more even his cheek is now with just what I did there. And all I did was I just kind of did a heel brush in the local area. And it doesn't matter too much because it's a low frequency layer, so you don't have to keep a lot of detail there. I basically smudged, but I kept a little bit of the texture without getting too much. Um, I'm working at 68% opacity, which means I'm basically blending as I go. Um, part of what's going on here is you have to know what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm almost painting the shape of his face back in through light and shadow. I'm saying, where should there be light and where should there be shadow to make things feel smooth? There we go. Um, and I will say these have already been somewhat retouched in Capture One just to get the colors the way I wanted them. A little bit of skin retouching. Let's move that chin line out. There we go. So now this wrinkle in his neck is not the most flattering thing. So we'll start with the low frequency layer. Be crunching as the cat having lunch on my desk because she's spoiled and she won't eat unless she's with me. That's my wife is out of town. Yes, we have spoiled cats. Okay, so that's gone there. So now you see the difference in the way that shape looks because I fixed the shadows so they're even, which tells the human eye that, that area is smooth. Now we've got this crease on the high frequency layer. That looks like it's a very flat crease because now we've removed all the shadow from either side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick skin next to it. And let's make our opacity 100%. Let's get rid of it completely. Okay. I do want to smooth out some of these bumps over here. See, so you'll notice I'm working on the high frequency edge. Part of what's going on there is because this is the edge of his face, it is a high frequency edge, sort of by definition. It's a, it's a, a place of rapid transition. Um, the other thing you'll see me doing is I'm adjusting the angle of my heel brush, which is something that I think a lot of people forget you can do. So because I'm pacing along a curve, the angle at which I want to, I say pacing, because I'm healing along a curve, if I didn't rotate the the angle at which the, the brush applied, what would happen is I would be applying that edge of his face turn the wrong direction. It would look very unnatural. So let me just show you that. I rotated all the way around by the end. But so for example, see how, let me find a spot that makes it more dramatic. 
right there. See how that looks right now? Right, that's not what we want. So by this rotation up here on Affinity, almost any of the brushes that clone uh, in any way, whether it's teal or actual clone, allow you to add this rotation, which says, hey, take the source and rotate it this many degrees, which is really helpful sometimes. Oops. Okay. Sometimes you don't need it. Sometimes you can get away without it. These curves are close enough to the same. Just a little artifact right there. Good. Okay. Now I haven't done anything with the overall shape in terms of warping or anything like that. I don't know that I'm going to. Um, and there's a lot more I could do to this. Let's clean up a few more things. So I'm just going to take out, you know, if you look at if you look at a high-risk picture of anybody's forehead, we all have this type of thing on it. Um, and the rest of our face, we, we like to think of ourselves, I don't care if you're 16 or 12 or 2, 2 years old, you've got, your skin is not smooth. And those defects are not a bad thing, but they tend to stand out in photos. Okay. So I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. Um, these are these are actually the first stage of retouching um, because I'm not sure how far he wants me to go in terms of making him look young. So I'm going to go ahead and export this guy and send it over to him and say, okay, here's here's where we went. Let me know if this this is what you want. If he wants more, I can do more. If he wants less, I can do less. Here's where we started. Here's where we ended up.